Good morning, good morning, disciples. Welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, yes, I have rollers in my hair. My mom did my hair yesterday while I was at my sister's house. And then um, I drove home this morning. I'm an hour and a half away from my mom. Drove home this morning, put the rollers in my hair, dipped them in hot water, and I got ready for church. So I'm on my way to church right now. It's 8.23 a.m. on this lovely second Sunday of September. And I'm just being obedient at this point. I'm gonna say a prayer because while I was getting ready for work, the Lord, um, I was just feeling like, okay, Lord, there's something that more that you want me to do to cross over and to receive my full ministry of reconciliation. Now that I know that I know within my heart and in my soul and my spirit bears witness that I am officially saved and born again, I know that the next step is to be prepared and to actually receive my ministry of reconciliation, the particular activities, events, and the platform and all of the other giftings that are supposed to be um, displayed through this ministry that God is calling me to and wants me to have. But I can't receive that until, of course, I move in further position and am in complete alignment with God's perfect will. And so with that being said, I just felt in my spirit like, okay, Lord, then what more do you want me to do? What else do you want me to um, prepare? You know, what else is there for me to be in position to receive this ministry that you have called me to? And then um, I just continued and within maybe a minute, I heard the Holy Spirit whisper, be honest. And oh, I love when the Holy Spirit speaks. Um, I didn't always hear the Holy Spirit. God always dealt with me directly. Like I would hear his voice. So I've heard God's voice, Jesus' voice and the Holy Spirit's voice. So they all have three distinct voices. Same God, but the manifestation of each and every single one of them is different. And so the Trinity and the Godhead of um, our, our creator is just so beautiful and intricate. But yes, I heard the Holy Spirit say, be honest. So then I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to be honest with or for? And then I'm thinking he wants me to um, give a little extra details to a particular party, but he's like, no, it's not that. You were honest. I'm pleased with how you dealt with that. He was like, but you need to be honest and I heard the Holy Spirit whisper, um, algorithm. And I'm like, huh? So then I put two and two together and I said, so Laura, are you saying you want me to be more honest with um, my YouTube channel or on my YouTube channel? And the Holy Spirit began to minister to me and tell me that he wants me to encourage you guys and exhort you guys by telling you the truth as to why I really have to move. Um, is I've kind of been making it lighthearted up to this point and like, oh, I'm moving because yes, I did do a video um, several weeks ago where um, it was God t gave me these two options in order to fulfill his best and perfect will for my life. And one of those options that I shared in depth in that video is now coming to pass, which is leading me to move out of state so that I can not only keep my current position at my job, but that I can um, then obviously come more in alignment with God's will. And so God said, I want you to just share a little bit more about the different reasons why um, that have since been revealed as to why it's essential for you to move. And I'm going to share that. And I have some scripture to back it up. I'll have to Google some on my phone, but I already have the first one. So I'm going to say a quick prayer, you guys, and then I'm going to get right into this. And then you guys are going to um, come along with me um, as I just, well, not come along, but just sit with me as I take these out out um, towards the end of the video and then I'm gonna make it to the nine o'clock service so yes dearly father I just thank you for your grace and your mercy Lord I know that you desire mercy and not sacrifice and so as I'm learning more and you're ministering to me about um, the mercy that you desire to give me so that I don't keep sacrificing um, not only important things but things that I desire um, I know that obedience is required. And so I pray, Lord, that whoever is watching this video, that the main 
message and the main takeaway they get from this message is that obedience is better than sacrifice and that you desire to give your children mercy more than have us make sacrifices. We can't make sacrifices with blood and rams and goats. That's not what you're calling us to. You want us to be obedient and you want to give us mercy through our repentance and through our course corrections in life just by mere faith. And so I pray, Lord, that faith abounds and you take us from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and from strength to strength. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that every single reason why I actually have to move from California and relocate in a completely different state and leave everything behind is communicated exactly as you would have it to be communicated to your children and to those who this video is intended for. I thank you, Lord, for just a beautiful day and another day to be able to go into the house of the Lord and worship you. I pray that the people that are watching this have also been awarded that opportunity to go into the house of the Lord and worship. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for your goodness, your kindness, and your love towards us. In Jesus' matches mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, so the first reason i didn't even write these things down but i'm again i just said a prayer because i just trust that the holy spirit's going to reveal it so the first reason why and the major reason why you guys i have to relocate is because when i backslid which also meant falling from grace because i knew more at, by that time than i had before and god is definitely holding me accountable to that and i'm reaping the consequences but the main reason, number one biggest reason why I have to move is because when I backslid while I was living in Vegas, the last man, well, not even the last man, but the, you know, my boyfriend, the man that was, um, that I was in a relationship with, um, unbeknownst to me, but because of my idolatry and because of my sinful ways and just the cunning ways and the charm that I used, which was twinged in witchcraft and manipulation. And because of my heart desires that turned into an idol, as I said, um, of wanting children, I backslid with this man who um, I believe God wanted me to um, lead him and point him to Jesus, but in a more pure way. And so this man who started off as my friend, um, later down the road after we both had a trauma bond with COVID pneumonia, um, it was revealed that I was trying to um, move forward with having children through IVF. And once he found that out by me, he pretty much convinced me and said, hey, you don't have biological children. I don't have it. Let's do this together. And I thought I had um, sought the Lord and I had a friend at the time who was my assistant at the store I managed who we would pray together. And I just felt like, okay, I'm going to do this. And him and I entered into this contractor agreement, essentially to produce offspring. Um, and at the time I was celibate and um, the intention was not to have sex. It was not to fornicate, um, to produce these children, but to do turkey basting and to strictly do it through artificial at home insemination. Um, but unfortunately, um, by the time I went through my round of COVID pneumonia, because he was first, he healed, and then he was there for me, um, self-control got less and less and fear heightened for me because I was in Vegas alone. And because I went through that massive um, five week and then entered into COVID long after that, which was debilitating, it was scary, um, you know, I could have died it was just all of these reasons I sought him further for comfort and then on top of that since we had already agreed prior to me catching COVID pneumonia that we were going to do this journey it was just like more compromises after compromises staying the night at each other's house um you know doing a little bit of other things and stuff um except penetration but eventually obviously you open that door to the enemy he's gonna you give him a mile or an inch he's gonna take a mile and run with it and so that's eventually what happened so after 16 months of celibacy i eventually um decided that i was going to do this and try to reproduce with him um the natural way which led to i mean almost three years later you guys it, it was not the best decision um 
it led to massive, massive um, demonic warfare. And I can't even, I can't even get into it. If you guys watch my videos, I do share my testimony in several different types of videos and several different, several different topics that I've brought up. But all in all, when I fell short and I fell from grace, that was the moment when I started the race that I was running up to that point for 11 years halted and I literally slipped and it was a little bit prior to that actually um unbeknownst to me but God has since opened my eyes and given me the understanding but it was actually right before I moved to Vegas that I had slipped into the um demonic realm of not only the occult but also the um the realm of the Illuminati and just everything that that represents and stuff um because I was unbeknownst to me I was practicing divination and divination comes in many different forms you guys and this is why God is saying be honest and I'm getting emotional because I feel the Holy Spirit saying this is exactly what I'm using you for I need you to be honest with my people and tell them um more specific things by um, by exposing the unfruitful works of darkness, the things that you struggled with. Yes, you did not know, but now that you know, I need you to not be stingy and I need you to not be selfish and hold on to this information. I need you to share this with my people because you guys, I, when I left my marriage, I did not know, but because of, there was a lot of reasons, but there was little things working in the backdrop that the enemy was stewing and um, he was using a lot of things against me and I was receiving certain things and doing certain things in the physical um, that was um, hardening my heart towards God and also causing a lot of delays in the spiritual and that was the um, that was indulgence in witchcraft essentially and the occult practices of divination because um when you put your hope and faith in signs when you put your hope and faith in horoscopes i stopped see i thought i was good because i was delivered from horoscopes in 2010 when i had a radical encounter with the lord and he immediately took that away from me and i had never looked at another horoscope but it morphed into different things that i didn't think were bad and some of those things were numbers you know paying attention to numbers i'm i'm even careful about that now because paying you know when i give my my heart over and my thoughts over to oh look at that license plate or look at that number and look at this sequence and um look at this sign and in names and this and that when we begin to look and seek after signs like that we are in danger we are in danger of idolatry we are in danger of all types and forms of doors opening into the demonic realm which includes the occult and includes the illuminati um system and everything everything and even the um the um the mason masonry system and so we have to really be careful and and i was beginning to feel the impact of all of this indulgence um in 2019 um right before i moved to vegas but i would you know renounce it and then I would come back to it in a different form. And it was, it had such a strong hold on me that I didn't know necessarily how to rid it. And I didn't have the habits yet and still of reading my Bible. At that point, I needed to be in my Bible every, every single day, reading more like the way I indulge in it now. But I was reading scriptures, but I wasn't always consistent with it. And those things seemed to have taken precedent. And so at the end of the day, I had to, um, I would go back and forth and I would struggle. So by the time I moved to Vegas, doors was already open, unseen doors in the spiritual realm and within my soul and within my mind and my heart, whereby I was falling short in those different ways. But by the grace of God, God was giving me strength to put a stop to certain relationships. I had about, um, two two encounters with men before I ended up with my ex who was a Muslim and also um or who is Muslim and also who you know struggled with his own affiliation with the occult and Illuminati because 
my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And I was in danger of hellfire without even knowing it because I was running a race that I thought was just a part of my Christian walk and living, believing I was already saved and covered by the blood. But in reality, I wasn't. By the time I had backslidden with my um, with those two men and even just majorly um, stepped out of, you know, the grace of God um, with with my um, ex-Muslim boyfriend um it was at that point i was like pretty much gone and god yet and still because of his love and grace and mercy um that he he says i will i will my um i will reign and give reign to the just and the unjust i was living an unjust life but by his grace and mercy he was still giving me reign and helping me feel like at least i was close to him in some ways but without the deeper truth and understanding i was actually slowly perishing and i was in in danger of premature death because of my decisions and because of my actions so all in all what i'm communicating to you guys is you got to flee from idols if you are in any sinful relationship if you are doing anything contrary to the word of god if you are drinking and um engaging in debauchery orgies sex fornication with people that are not your spouse and people that you are not married to if you are even practicing adultery while married because you think open relationships is a mature thing to do you have to repent you have to turn from your wicked way so that god can hear you and heal you and heal your land that's what he says in second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 he says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land and so he's he's telling me and i can feel it heavier he was like this is exactly what i wanted you to tell this is a psa announcement that if you believe that you are in christ and you think that you stand for the gospel you must examine your life right now and test your life for yourself because if you are wrapped up in any unequally yoked relationship or union with a man or a woman then you must turn to God, repent, and set those boundaries in place and turn away from that relationship. You must get out and come in a complete alignment because there's so many, so many things that has happened. I can't rehash all of them, but one of the major things was while I was with this man, God would still open my eyes and give me dreams and visions. He gave me many dreams of warnings about this man, about him cheating, about him being with different women and about betrayal. But I overlooked it. He even gave me dreams about my own desperation and how desperate I was just to procreate and so um but choosing wrong and choosing to go against his will but one of the major things that God showed me when he opened up my eyes was that the longer I was in this relationship and the longer I was with this man more doors was opening in different parts of my body I would see doors swing open in my mind I would see doors swing open in my thighs I would see doors swing open in my abdomen and in my arms I didn't know what that meant until I came out of it and what God said was that the each time you was with him more spirits was being departed in you because again a man is the one that imparts in a woman so we are receiving everything the dna genetic makeup of a man and all his other sexual partners as well now every sexual partner that we have that man is also subject and privy to receiving unto himself but imagine all those soul ties and because i know how this man ran and how he lived his life I was shook. I didn't know how bad it was and, and still didn't even understand the repercussions of, of everything until I came out. But I do know that I was being attacked day and night. I was being tortured day and night by demons. Um, this man had um, pictures of drug dealers all plastered around his um wall um downstairs in his living room and he he was an idol worshiper um in many different forms right um and so at the end of the day i was being attacked by these 
false gods and the spirits that these false false gods operate out of. And so every time I would anoint the house or whatever, they would come back 10 times. And because he was not a believer and he was Muslim, every time I would try to tell him his responses obviously weren't biblical and they were not protecting or soothing because I was being attacked greatly and I knew that it was only by the power of God I was going to be set free and so obviously the end result is I finally broke free but it wasn't until the last 19 months since I've been free and sanctified as of January 27 2023 where God began to teach me these things and show me through scripture and then make things more clear in my actual life experience of how the Illuminati works, how the occult works and all of those things. So as I said, anytime we worship any other God that is not the one and true and living God, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. We are opening up doors to, into our faculties, into our minds, and we're giving free reign to demons. Listen, this is a um, this is a scripture that I always refer to. This is Matthew chapter twelve, verse forty three. Oftentimes, for different reasons, when we start on the walk with God, we will experience some relief and some form of deliverance. But we must be careful not to go back into the world and then to be re, re um, contaminated and reinfected by the sins of this world and by the spirits that these sins bring. Because it says here in Matthew twelve forty three, it says, "When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid." and dry places seeking rest and does not find it. Verse 44, then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Verse 45, then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. You guys, when I tell you how true this scripture rang, rang in my life, listen, God had been faithful to me all the way up to that point. Even all the times I fell short, I would repent and all, all that. But I was 16 months celibate and I was seeking God and I was reading the Bible, but guess what? I fainted. I grew weary in my well-doing. The Bible tells us, do not grow weary in your well-doing for you will reap if you faint not. I was on the verge of reaping. I was in the midst of reaping. God had um, blessed my finances. I was in the middle of closing for a house. I was in the middle of relocating back to California anyway. Um, I had opportunities. I had clarity. I had peace. But I grew weary in well-doing. I let fear become greater than my faith. Fear of, oh my gosh, what if I'm home alone and I die? Let me go shack up and cuddle up with a man and I'll I'll keep my um my composure and I'll keep my hands to myself. No, I was I was double-minded. I wanted um to have the presence and the comfort of a man more than I wanted it by God or more than I was willing to wait to receive it and to get that comfort from God through doing the necessary things and so at the end of the day when I fell short, everything changed. I felt the shift and the longer I was with him, the more demons was entering into me, you guys, not only through our sexual fornication, but through the world, everywhere we went. When I went places with him, when I went to clubs with him, when I went, I was, I was becoming more sinful because the demons had access to me. They had access to me through my body and through the choices that I was making at that time. The doors were swinging open, as I said. And so I was beginning to do things that I wouldn't normally do. That's why Peter said, or Paul says, I do what I ought not to do and what I not do not want to do, I do. Because sin could be that powerful. Whoever we present ourselves to obey, that becomes our master we become a slave to that thing. So when we present ourselves to obey sin, doesn't matter what type of sin, addiction is sin, addiction to sex, addiction to drugs, addiction to alcohol, addiction to robbery, stealing, killing, murders, all of those things, lying, all of those things are forms of addictions and can become idols in a person's life. And so at the end of the day, I was addicted to love. I was addicted to, um, 
you know, d this rush of sex and, you know, this and just all that stuff. And so at the end of the day, it became extremely toxic and these demons begin to have a hold over me. And so obviously I had to do some things and leave and, and by through prayer and fasting and everything, God gave me the grace to leave. But I just want to warn you guys, we cannot play. We cannot say that we are believers and Christians and still be in this live um, be of the world. We must live in the world, but we cannot be of it. And the moment you begin to try to argue your position and say, I don't believe the Bible means that. I don't believe God says that. You're not a Christian. And I'm just saying it out because I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking through me right now. I wasn't a Christian. As much as I compromised, as much as I said, oh, da, 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 there's a difference between falling short of the glory of God in any given moment. And especially in a situation where we have not been exposed to um, how to direct Directly apply or the immediacy of applying the word to that but when we realize it we come out of it we repent and we say okay Lord I'll do better next time oh that was the moment I should have applied turn the other cheek or I should have applied you know being kind and giving my my neighbor something that I actually had instead of turning them away when I had it and all of these things God understands those moments but when we willfully sin and someone can't say but I didn't know yes you know if you call yourself a Christian, you believer, at some point in time, you've been preached and you've been taught or it's been mentioned to you that you should not have sex with someone that is not your spouse. God created marriage and it is a covenant between a man and a woman. And it is a covenant to be kept between a man and a woman and to be entered through the holy matrimony of acknowledging God. It is a covenant, a blood covenant um, between man and God and Jesus. And so at the end of the day, when there's no longer two, but the, they should become one flesh. And Jesus at the center of that marriage, he says, whatever God brings together, let not man put asunder. And so at the end of the day, we have a responsibility to honor marriage and to keep it at its high value. When we are having sex with people casually and or say, we're in a committed relationship, it's just a piece of paper. It doesn't matter as long as we're just together or whatever you're still undermining marriage. That is sinful because whoever knows to do right but does not do it to them, that is sin. What well, That's what the Bible says. And so when we fall short in those ways, but also in those um, intentional ways, that is dishonoring to God. That makes us non-believing because God says, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. Whoever follows my commandments and does what these precepts says, those are my children read your Bible, you guys. And so at the end of the day, I've had to fight for my life, you guys. I was literally facing premature death. If I told you some of the symptoms and some of the things that I saw and faced, you guys would be like, what the heck? Some of the things, for example, when I started to come out and I started to fight through fasting, the Holy Spirit took over. I fasted for about three months straight, barely drinking. Um, I was drinking water, but barely eating anything, maybe soups here and there. I couldn't really eat because the Holy Spirit was on my side at that time when he realized that I was ready to surrender my life of sin. And I would hear, he would let me hear, and I still hear at times the, the devil speak. And I heard Satan speak. He was like, no. Oh, we've been together for so long. You guys, it's when I tell you I've been shook, I've been shook. I'm not lying. I've been shook. And there's so many other things that I can share with you guys, which I'm going to begin to share more um, videos specifically like this. But I'm, I'm focusing on the very first reason why I had to move. <laughs> Another reason is because my ex, um, God has revealed to me that my ex is... Um, stalking me and is fixing and looking for a way to come back and and the only reason why I hadn't faced him face to face in the last year because he did pop up to my house a year ago is because God's grace as long as I'm in position and moving forward and following the voice of God God is keeping him back from me. That's protection. That's divine protection. That's what you get when you're under the blood covenant of God. So that's one of the reasons why I have to relocate um, to an unknown place um, and to a place where um, no one can know because it's for protection from him. The other reason why I have to relocate is because God wants me to have a hard reset and a new fresh beginning with the position, the same position I have currently, but at a new installation. Why? When I entered into this position, 
at the current um, installation that I'm at, my company was a little bit more lax with some of the things. I was told that we have a little bit more freedom with um, with the service members to just, you know, kind of become a friend to them and, and help them to feel comfortable to share their problems because I do non-medical counseling and so we don't have to take notes, treatment plans or whatever for my job. And so the way the the job was communicated seemed a little bit more lax and because i'm such a personal person i began to develop relationships with um some of the soldiers some of the service members and just kind of be a little bit more lax but as the company began to share more of what our role is and and cut back cut down on what the boundaries should look like and all of that i begin to get convicted and because i already started to form relationships with these people um friendships and you know hang out with them or whatever um on, on the you know on posts and everything i begin to feel convicted and i'm like well i want to do the right thing obviously so that's another reason why god began to move me in a new direction because he's like i'm this was like the preliminary um you know coming into this new role or whatever but it's a role of a lot of freedom and because you have freedom i don't want you to use it as an opportunity to sin which means yeah if your company says you can't date a service member or whatever you can't do that then you gotta be um you have to obey those laws and those rules um because they are your your earthly master and so i'm like okay so that's another reason why he wants me to move to give me a fresh start and a new beginning and a new opportunity to implement um, the word of God and to not only be a hearer of it, but a doer also to keep better boundaries, um, to go there and not fraternize or to share um, personal information that I don't need to share or to befriend them just to be strictly professional in a very highly um, free and flexible position that I've been afforded and um, granted to have. So I thank God for this job and stuff because I love it, um, but he wants me to um, to be a good steward of it and in it so that's another thing the third reason why god wants me to re to move and and um it's because he's saying that this move is also attached to the other part of my prayer which is um his his high calling and so this will require me to um, step into another responsible role. I'm not going to share too much about that one yet, but he is positioning me to, um, to be able to um, fulfill his high calling. I'm already in the realms of his perfect and his the best way he wants me to fulfill his will for my life. But I also been praying for his high calling, um, and so and in a more excellent way. And so relocating to this particular state and everything is apparently a part of God's plan. So all in all, you guys, I want to stress this: be obedient. If God tells you to move and you know you recently had a breakup with someone or you are about to enter into a relationship with someone and there's huge red flags and there you, you're just not in alignment with the word of God, there's no equally yokeness, don't do it. Trust me, take it from me. It is not worth it. Sometimes we put ourselves, oftentimes we put our, ourselves in these situations, we become tempted, we fall for the bait and then we cry out to God, oh my gosh, why is this happening? Well, God's gonna give us and provide us a way out but it's not gonna be pleasant necessarily and we got to be willing to do the work to get totally clean and free and that's what I'm doing one of the reasons other reasons why fourth reason why is so that I can be fully and completely separate God told me that I must leave my house and land because at once upon a time when I was living in Vegas I would travel back and forth to my house and bring idols and items that was um a part of the cult and came from satan and was awarded to my ex from satan that he then gave to me as gifts and i put them in my house anytime we give legal access to the enemy through objects or items jobs money remember satan can give people things too that's a whole nother video as to how to discern whether or not someone's fruit is from god or from satan okay but i had fruit or certain things and items that was given to me from my ex but those things was given to him and warded to him by satan because he was a high working warlock in the kingdom of darkness and so once they came into my house it gave satan legal right over my house so long story short my house has been demonic i've been fighting i don't sleep i i have to work during the second third and fourth watch hours it's a lot so god said if you want to keep this land charmel you have to leave this land and be away from it for seven years because that's when the debt will be paid in full he said i understand your logic you want to have land you don't want to sell it you, it's a it was a 
good opportunity he said but in order for me to reclaim it back you have to wait seven years and you have to move away from it and you cannot reoccupy it and live in it until seven years has passed and this scripture is based off of the shunammite woman who um had to leave her land and um left some stewards over it and after seven years she came back to it and collected all of the money that was paid to her land so yes god does do those types of things and in my life he's actually saying if you want to be able to um keep this land in this house as part of your investment and as part of your portfolio that's fine he said but you have to move away from it in order to keep it and you cannot come back to it until seven years because that's from the day you move away from it that's when the time will start and seven years from that point you have to remain away from it for the debt to be paid in full. This is some law stuff and this, this is the grace and mercy of God stuff. But only the Holy Spirit of God can reveal these things to you. So yes, that's another reason why. Because my house has been tainted and it has been contaminated with the things of the devil, God wants to air it out and clean it out. Now that does not mean I cannot come to the house and, and have it worked on or have it, but I can't be, it, I can't claim it as my primary residence. In other words, it cannot be my primary residence as it has been for the last year since I've moved back. And so with all that being said, yeah, there's a lot of things that God is just showing me like, this is why you have to move. And now he wanted me to share it with you guys. To be honest, I have fallen short miserably. I'm thankful that I have fought for my life back and to get back under the covering of God. Um, I had to start over. God gave me a second chance and a clean slate because we can't re-crucify God quite twice. That means we're either saved or we're not. I found out that I actually wasn't saved. I was running the race. So it's not, so I did not crucify God twice, but because I had already tasted the goodness of God and, and pretty much went back to my old vomit, it was still like a slap in the face to Jesus because he was already showing me his goodness and keeping me on the way, on the right path as I was running my waist, race and eventually about to come into salvation. I was closer to true salvation after um, exiting my marriage than I ever realized, but I fell short miserably and it was like pretty much a, I had to restart. Y'all, this is real stuff, but just read your word, know God, draw close to him, love him, um, put him first, you guys. That's all I can say. I love you guys with the love of Jesus. I'll be back. I'll share more videos, more insights about the kingdom of darkness and about the, um, the unfruitful works of darkness that God wants me to share. But I love you guys with the love of Jesus. I am moving for particular reasons um, and they're serious reasons and I, I'm not taking them lightly. All right, you guys, take care. I love you guys. Bye. And this is what my hair looks like real quick, you guys. I literally just popped these out. It took me two minutes. <laughs> so this is the end. Um, and I will see you guys soon. Gotta get to church.